Hello, this is a quick review video about parallel lines and transversals. As a quick reminder, parallel lines are two lines that never ever cross or never ever intersect. So in this picture, these two lines here would be considered parallel lines because they're never crossing. Now a transversal is any line that goes through those two parallel lines. So this line here would be considered a transversal. Now when parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, some unique things happen with their angles. The four angle relationships that we're going to talk about in this video are corresponding angles, alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles, and same side interior angles. The first one we're going to look at is corresponding angles, which are two angles that are in relatively the same spot. If you look at these two angles, they're in the same general location. Okay, how I like to think about this is see how here is an X, right here there's an X, and there's another X down here. These two angles are in the same relative location, meaning they're both right here in the top middle. So they are corresponding angles. Next, we are going to look at alternate exterior angles. So alternate means that they're going to be kind of crisscross from each other, okay? So here, they, this one, is on the right side of the transversal, but this one is on the left side of the transversal. Okay, what I mean by that is here's the transversal, right? And this angle is on the top of the transversal and this one's on the bottom of the transversal. So they are alternate from each other, okay? We also call them exterior because if I look at my parallel lines, here are my parallel lines, the two angles are on the outside of those parallel lines. So they are exterior, alternate exterior angles. And alternate exterior angles are always congruent. So you can see in this picture, this one is 130 degrees, this one is also 130 degrees. The next relationship that we are going to look at is alternate interior angles. Again, we have this word alternate, alternate. So if I look at my transversal, this angle is on the top of the transversal and this angle is on the bottom of the transversal, so they are alternate. We also call them interior because if I look at my parallel lines, the angles are inside of the two parallel lines, so they are alternate interior angles. And as you can see in the picture, alternate interior angles are also congruent. This one is 130 degrees, and this one is also 130 degrees. The last relationship that we are going to look at is same side interior angles. So first, if I look at the transversal and I look at the two angles, notice how both angles are on top of the transversal. That's why we call them same side. They're both on the same side of the transversal, okay? Now, we also call them interior because if we look at the parallel lines, both angles are inside of the parallel lines. So they are same side interior angles. Now, the thing about same side interior angles is that they are supplementary. And if you remember, supplementary means that two angles will add up to be 180 degrees. So if I take these two angles and add them together, they will always equal 180 degrees if they are same side interior angles. So let's look at a couple examples. It says state the relationship and find the value of the indicated angle. So for the first one, if I look at these two angles here, 
121 and the question mark, those two angles would be alternate exterior angles. Or for short, I can put ALT, EXT, alternate exterior angles. Now alternate exterior angles should be congruent, which means they're going to be equal. They're going to be exactly the same. So for this first picture, our question mark is going to also be 121 degrees. For the second picture, we have a 74 and we have a question mark. These two angles are corresponding angles. Or for short, we can write C-O-R-R, -O -R, corresponding angles. Now corresponding angles are always congruent. So if this one is 74, our question mark will also have to be 74 degrees. For our third picture, we have a 66 and a question mark. These two angles are same side interior angles, which means they need to be supplementary. They need to add up to 180 degrees. So to figure out what question mark is, I'm going to take 180 minus 66 to see what it makes. And it makes 114. So our question mark is going to be 114 degrees. And again, I should label that these are same side interior angles, or SSINT for short. Lastly, I have this 82 in the question mark. Those are alternate interior angles. Okay, alternate interior angles, which are always congruent, meaning they have to be the same. So this question mark is also going to be 82 degrees. Now let's look at some examples that include algebra. State the relationship and find the value of x. So if I look at these two angles, these would be same side interior angles. So let's label that. Same side interior angles. Now, same side interior angles we know are supplementary, which means that they need to add up to be 180 degrees. So I'm going to take these two angles in my picture, 24x and 60, and I need to add them together to have them equal 180 degrees. Now I'm going to solve my equation to find the value of x. So first I'm going to subtract 60 from both sides. 24x comes down. 180 minus 60 is 120. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 24, and I find that x equals 5. Now, as a reminder, in this situation, we had it equal 180. But the reason we did that was because same side interior angles are supplementary. We will not always have our equations equal 180. Let's see an example that will not equal 180. State the relationship and find the value of x. So when I look at these two angles, 16x plus 5 and 15x plus 12, those are corresponding angles. So let's label that. C-O-R-R -R for short, corresponding. Now, corresponding angles are always congruent, which means they have to be the same, or they need to be equal. So this time, instead of making 180, I am going to take these two angles, 16x plus 5 and 15x plus 12, and I'm going to set them equal to each other, 
because corresponding angles are congruent, and congruent means equal. And now I'm going to solve. So first, I need to subtract 15x from both sides to get the x's on the same side. 12 comes down. 16x minus 15x would make 1x. But remember, a 1x is the same as x. Now I'm going to subtract 5 to get x by itself. And x equals 7.